So, hey guys, welcome to the solution video of today's code courses round. We'll be discussing problems A, B, C, and D. And problem C is actually my favorite because it's kind of a game theory problem where you need to think, right? So let's start with the first problem A. Okay. Now, what does the problem say? The problem says that you are given a complete graph. Okay. With N nodes. Okay. What does a complete graph mean, guys? A complete graph means that there is an edge between each pair of nodes. Between each pair of nodes. Okay. After this, we are given an integer k. What are we told? We are told that we have to remove k edges from the graph so that the amount of nodes, amount of nodes reachable from node one reduces. Okay. So this is, no, this is the first problem, right? This problem A. Okay. So what does this problem say? We are given a complete graph with N nodes. What does a complete graph mean? There is an edge between each pair of nodes. After that, we are given an integer K. Our task is to remove K edges from the graph so that the amount of nodes reachable from node one reduces. Okay. So now let's make a graph for let's say N is equal to four. Okay. For N is equal to four, our graph will look something like this. Right. This is node one, this is node two, this is node three, this is node four. Now, what is the minimum answer possible? Tell me guys, what is the minimum number of nodes that are connected to one? Like what is the minimum answer possible? Like if I remove, removed all the edges, what would the answer be? The answer would be one, right? Why would the answer be one? Because if I am able to remove all edges, then the number of nodes connected to one is only one. Hence, the minimum answer is one. Okay. Now, let's discuss how many nodes, how many edges do we need to remove, right? To get this answer one. Because we want to make our answer as small as possible. So how many edges do we need to remove? Right. So if you want to remove, if you want to make one isolated, the thing to notice is that we don't need to remove all edges. We only need to remove those edges that are connected to one. And how many edges are connected to one? There are N minus one edges connected to one. Why? Because one is connected to two, one is connected to three, one is connected to four, so on and so forth. Up to one is connected to n. So there are n minus one edges that are connected to one. So can we say that if k is greater than or equal to n minus one, our answer will be one? Tell me. Okay. Now, we solved our problem for k greater than or equal to n minus 1. What will happen when k smaller than n minus 1? Let's discuss, guys. Okay? If, right, 
so someone mentions that answer will always be n why let's discuss right the claim is that if k is smaller than n minus 1 the answer will be n but why let's try to discuss if k is smaller than n minus 1 you will never be able to isolate any node isolation of any node not possible why is this not possible because each node is connected to n minus 1 other nodes so basically no matter what you do there will be an edge between each node basically the entire graph will still be connected does it make sense guys put a yes in the chat if this makes sense amit says yes what about others vineet says yes priyan says yes right so basically what we are trying to say is when k is smaller than n minus 1 you cannot fully remove a node let's say i wanted my answer to be n minus 1 if i want my answer to be n minus 1 i need to remove one node right so if i want to remove one node i need to remove n minus 1 edges but since k is smaller than n minus 1 It is not possible to isolate any node, and hence the answer remains as one. So the solution is as follows: If k is greater than equal to n minus one, then we print one. Otherwise, we print n. Is this much clear, guys? So let me show you the code. This is the code for a, right? I take in the number of test cases. for each test case i solve right i have two integers n and k if k is greater than equal to n minus 1 i print 1 otherwise i print n let's move on to the next problem which is problem b okay let's discuss what the problem has to say you are given an array of length 2n consisting of each integer from 1 to n exactly twice you are also given an integer k right you need to find two arrays l and r each of length 2k such that l is a subset of the first half of the array r is the subset of the second half of the array and the bitwise or of elements is e of l is equal to the bitwise or of elements in r okay and one more constraint each element occurs exactly twice basically one will occur once twice so on and so forth right so what does the problem say guys the problem says that we are given an n we are given a k and we are given an array of length 2n okay this is what is given to us we have to form two subsets l and r both of these has to be of length 2k okay l should contain elements from a1 to an r should contain elements from an plus 1 to when basically the second half of the array and zor of all elements zor of all elements in l is equal to zor of all elements in r okay and last but not the least okay this array this array right here consists of elements 1 to n and each occurs each element occurs exactly twice 
basically what i'm trying to say is one will occur two times in the array two will occur two times in the array three will occur three times uh, two times in the array so on and so forth and n will occur two times in the array is the problem statement clear guys put a yes in the chat if the problem statement is clear okay now let's discuss how to solve this right and before discussing how to solve this let's discuss some properties of zor let's discuss some properties of zor okay so what are some properties of zor a zor a is equal to 0 okay and a zor 0 is equal to a can we keep hold of this properties these are two properties of zor if you zor an element with itself you will get 0 and if you zor an element with 0 you will get the element itself these are two properties of zor okay and what is zor if someone does not know zor is basically a bitwise operator if you want to draw the truth table let's say a b and a zor b if this is a uh, 0 this is 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 so this is the truth table of zor is this much clear put a yes in the chat guys if these properties are clear okay now let's discuss this unique array what is this array this is of length 2n okay and it consists of elements 1 to n twice right now tell me guys if the array was let's say n is equal to 3 okay and the array is 1 2 3 1 2 3 okay and let's say k is 1 okay k can be maximum n by 2 so k is 1 do you guys see that there is 1 in the first half in the array there is 1 in the second half in the array second half of the array there is 2 in the first half of the array there is 2 in the second half of the array so i can just take l to be 1 and 2 and i can also take r to be 1 and 2 and since the elements here are the same their zor will also be the same do you guys notice this guys basically what i am trying to say is that if i can find 2k elements such that its first occurrence is between 1 to n and its second occurrence is between n plus 1 to 2n then i can just add that in both my arrays because since i am adding the same element whatever zor i do ahead would not really change right does it make sense guys put a yes in the chat if this makes sense shriyan says yes what about others if you guys are confused do let me know what you didn't understand if you do understand please let me know that as well okay so one thing is clear if we can find 2k elements with property that it's one occurrence is between indexes 1 to n second occurrence is between n plus 1 to 2n then i can just print those elements in order okay but is there a case where i won't be able to find this okay let's consider this case okay uh, what case let's take n is equal to 4 1 1 2 3 4 4 2 3 this is an array of size 2n 
वी कैन नोट एंड के यर इज वन ओके और लेट से के यर इज टू वी कैन सी दैट वी नीड टू फाइंड फोर एलिमेंट राइट फोर इन दी फर्स्ट हाफ फोर इन दी सेकेंड हाफ यू कैन नोटिस दैट टू इज देर एंड थ्री इज देर ओके सो इन एल आई विल पुट टू एंड थ्री इन आर आई विल ऑल्सो पुट टू एंड थ्री बट द थिंग नाव इज आई हैव वन इन माई फर्स्ट हाफ एंड आई हैव फोर इन माई सेकेंड हाफ ओके सो वॉट डू आई प्लेस यूर द थिंग टू नोटिस यूर इज गाइज वॉट इज वन जोर वन Yes, ones or one is zero, and what is fours or four? Fours or four is also zero. Basically, if in the first half an element is occurring twice, there will be another pair in the second half such that that element is occurring twice. Why? Because this first half should have been one, two, three, four. Okay. and you took this you took one of the elements out let's say you took out one and you put one here so you put the two in the second half since there are two ones here there have to be two twos here does it make sense guys basically for every pair such that both of its occurrences are in its first half there will be a pair in the second half such that there are two occurrences of that element In the second half, does it make sense? Shreyan says yes. What about others? What I'm trying to say here is, if my array is one, two, three, one, two, three, okay. Initially, all elements are unique. But let's say I want two ones in the first half. So let's say I remove this two. I put a one. So I'll remove this one and put a two. Since I removed that two and put it in the second half, now there are two twos here. Or basically, what I'm trying to say is, if you are trying to make the number of pairs that both the occurrences are in the first half is equal to the number of pairs such that both the occurrences are in the second half. Okay. Now the point is not that. The point is that. If I have a pair such that both the elements are in the first half, I can just put both of those elements because their zor is zero. Similarly, in the second half, if I have a pair such that both the occurrences are in the second half, I can just put that as well because zor of this is going to be zero. Zor of this is going to be zero. and all the other elements are same so wouldn't the zor of l and r l and r here also be same tell me guys yes so what did we discuss we discussed that if an elements one occurrence in first half first half and one occurrence in second half then we will always take it okay after that what did we discuss number of pairs number of elements okay number of elements in first half such that both of its okay both of the elements are in first half is equal to the number of elements in the second half second half elements with same property okay these are 
the two things and last but not the least if an element occurs twice in the first half i can just add it because its zor is zero basically if I, if a occurs twice in the first half i can just put a in l a comma a comma whatever because a zor a is zero does it make sense guys put a yes in the chat if these observations make sense shriyan says yes what about others yes okay now we have to put some elements uh do we have to use map to implement this problem not necessarily i will discuss how to implement this problem right so what is our strategy here for every element the elements are between 1 to n okay we will store where they occur basically let's say uh, for the array 1 2 3 1 2 3 okay one occurs on position 1 and 4 i am doing one based indexing element 2 occurs on position 2 and 5 and position 3 occurs on positions 3 and 6 right now we can store three vectors what is the three vectors we'll store a vector called single we'll store a vector called double l and we'll store a vector called double r what does single vector mean this vector means that there is one occurrence in the first half and one occurrence in the second half what will this store it stores elements such that both its occurrences are in the first half and similarly what does this vector store it stores elements such that both the occurrences are in the second half okay is it clear that we are going to use three vectors single double l and double r okay now what we are basically going to do is first we will iterate over double l and double r okay we are going to have our final vectors l and r okay i am going to iterate over double n and double r okay and for every element that is in double n and double r i can just push back those elements twice in l from double l and twice from r in double r what i am trying to say is let's say my array is like this okay so single vector will contain and let's say k is 1 in this case okay so we need 2k elements which is 2 single will contain 1 double l will contain 2 and double r will contain 3 okay these are my three vectors now i will iterate over double n and double r via indices okay both of them are going to have the same number of pairs right now i the number of elements that i need to insert right now is 2 okay if i insert two twos in l and two threes in r does it exceed the number of elements that we need to insert tell me guys if i insert two twos in l right now and two threes in r will it exceed the number of elements that we need in l and r respectively it won't right we can insert it so what do i do i just insert two twos in l and two threes in r what is my question my question was currently my vectors l and r are empty basically what i am going to print if i insert two twos in l 
and two threes in R, do I exceed the number of elements that I want to insert? Basically, does the size of my vector of L or R increase? Right. So now the size became two and size became two. But let's say there was a four year and a five year. Now, if I insert two fours in L and two fives in R, will it now increase the size? Will it now exceed the size of 2K? Right. It will, right. I cannot add two fours or two fives. Basically, I cannot add these elements because the size will get exceeded. So that is when I break. So I ex put two twos and two threes. And now all the remaining elements, currently I want to put zero elements, but let's say I wanted to put one more element. So I can just put that from single. I will put a one here and I will put a one here if I wanted to. Now I don't need to because there are zero elements left, but let's say this was one, three, five, and I wanted to put two elements more. I will put a, let's say one, seven and five, right? So I'll put a one comma seven here and one comma seven here. If I wanted to put two more elements, is this much clear? Shreyan says yes. What about Vinny? Right. So basically, this was an implementation problem. How good you are at implementation is what was being tested. Let's look at the solution, right? The solution is that fo follows. We have four vectors. One stores the occurrences of each element since an element can be between 1 to n only. My indices are between 1 to n. Basically, this is an array of vectors. You can have a 2D vector as well. Apart from that, I have the vector single, double first, and double second. You can have this as a double L and double R, right? So I take in each element, and for that element, I push its occurrence in that vector. Basically, occurrence x dot pushback i. Basically saying that, for the element X, one of its occurrences is I. Okay. Now, the thing to notice here is that each occurrence of I will be of size 2. Okay. And if both of them are smaller than equal to N, I can say that they come in the first half. Both of them come in the first half. And if both of them are greater than n, I can say that they come in the second half. And if one of them is in the first half and second one of them is in the second half, I can say that it is a single kind of element. Does this make sense? Okay. So this is what you want to do. If say, this occurrence is going to be in sorted order because we are going from index i to index 2n. So if the index, if occurrence is i dot back is smaller than equal to n, it means that both the occurrences are in the first half. So I push back double dot first dot push back i. Otherwise, if both the occurrences are greater than n, it means that it is in the second half. So I push it back in double second. Otherwise, I push it back into single. Now. I have two vectors L and R, right? For each element in double first and double second, I can push back two elements. So the maximum number of iterations this for loop should have is K because I want this will insert 2K elements. So for I is equal to zero, I smaller than min double first dot size, comma double second dot size, comma K. I'm putting size t because the data type of dot size is size t. I plus plus L dot pushback double first I L dot pushback double first I. Basically, I'm pushing back two occurrences in L and I'm pushing two occurrences in R. Okay, for every two elements that I push back in L, I'm pushing back two elements in R. After that, I am just iterating over the single array. If the element size becomes 2K, I just break. Otherwise, I just push back single I in both the arrays. In the end, I print both the arrays and that is my answer. Is this much clear, guys?
Shreyansh asks, we can use a map for storing occurrences. Okay. Yeah, you can do this as well. But is this implementation clear? This is a very clean implementation that I have done, right? For you guys to understand, you just use four vectors and you can implement it like this in around 40 odd lines. Does it make sense, guys? Put a yes in the chat. What will be the rating? I have no clue. Uh, I'll have to look into it. I will surely let you guys know. You can use ProBrat if you are on Discord, right? There is a bot known as TLE. If you use the function ProBrat, you will get to know the rating of this problem. Is the implementation clear, guys? Vineet says yes. Raj says yes. What about others? Great. So now let's move on to problem C, which is my favorite problem. Okay. It's a very important problem. Be prepared. Like there might be some cases where you might have gone wrong. And that is exactly what we'll be pointing out to us. What does the problem say? Alice and Bob play yet another game on an array A of size N. Alice starts with an empty array C. Both players take turns playing with Alice starting. On Alice's turn, she picks up one element from A, appends it to the element, uh, appends it to vector C and deletes it from A. On Bob's turn, he picks up one element from A and then deletes it from A. Okay. Now, The thing is, guys, what does the problem statement say? Problem says that we are given an array of size n. Okay. And this contains elements between 0 to n minus 1 only. So, ARRI is between 0 to n minus 1. Now there are two players, Alice and Bob. Alice starts first, okay? And there is a vector C. Alice, what does Alice do? Alice takes an element from A and puts it in C. Af apart from that, what does Bob do? Bob removes an element from from A. Okay. What is Alice's job? Alice's job is to maximize max of C. And what is Bob's job? Bob's job is to minimize max of c is this much clear guys is the problem statement clear we'll be taking it one step at a time tell me guys is this much clear yes okay so what is max and how do we maximize and minimize it max is the smallest Max of an array, okay, is the smallest non-negative number not present in the array. Basically, what I'm trying to say is something like 0, 1, 3, 4, 5, the max here is 2. Because 2 is not present in the array. For something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. The max here will be 0. Because 0 is not present in the array. And for something like 1, 2, 3, 4. The max here will be 5. Because 0 is there. 1 is there. 2 is there. 3 is there. 4 is there. 5 is the smallest positive non-negative number. Which is not there. 
is the definition of max clear okay now let's say you want to remove some element to make the max as small as possible which element would you remove for example in this case what element would you remove if you are given an array and you would said that you want to remove one element such that the max has to be as small as possible wouldn't you just remove zero because no matter which elements are in front of it if i remove zero the max is going to be zero because zero is not there in the array all elements occur exactly once that is what i forgot to tell you in this array not the problem okay is this much clear like in this array if even if we remove anything the max is still going to be zero in this array again if i remove zero the max becomes zero basically what i'm trying to say is that if we want to reduce max okay we want to remove as small elements as possible as possible okay and if you want max to be x okay let's say your alice you decide that okay i want my max to be x so which elements do i want in my array at least i want 0 i want 1 i want 2 and i want up to x minus 1 if i have all these elements and i don't have x i can say that my max is x does it make sense guys vineet says yes shriyan says yes so basically we can say that this is somewhat what bob wants to do and this is somewhat what alice wants to do right let's consider we have an array where all elements occur exactly once basically 0 1 2 3 okay in this case we know that alice wants to take as small elements as possible and put it in my c vector and bob wants to remove as small elements so it is alice's turn alice takes zero puts it in t bob now takes one because one is the smallest element possible and removes it from the array can you notice that no matter what i put in the array this max is always going to be one because i cannot put a one inside my c vector or c array does it make sense guys tell me shriyan says repeat okay consider the array is 0 1 2 3 <laughs> and my c vector is this alice wants to put in the element 0 first then 1 then 2 then 3 so on and so forth right because he wants all the elements from 0 1 2 3 L. so he will go in that order and bob his strategy is to remove as small elements as possible right so if this is the array and if i take alice it's alice's turn right so alice take 0 puts it in c and we remove it from the array now it is bob's turn so bob takes in 1 and removes it from the array now no matter what i put in this array if alice takes 2 or alice takes 3 the max of array c it is going to be 1 it cannot be 2 or 3 because we cannot put the element 1 in the array c basically what i'm trying to say is that the smallest non negative number that is not going to be there in array c is 1 
Does it make sense, Riyans? Yes. So what did we notice? If all elements occur exactly once, we are going to take out one. Now let's consider something else. We have zero. Okay. We have one. And then we have two. This is another array. In this case, you might think that, okay, we will put C in my array first. But do you guys notice that when Bob decides to take out a zero, let's say there is some move and it's Bob's turn. And Bob is like, okay, I will take out one of the zeros. Right? In that case, I can just take the other zero at that time. Since there are two zeros, whenever Bob decides to take out this zero, is when I'm going to take the zero and put it in C. Does it make sense, guys? Till then, I don't need to touch zero. What I'm trying to say is, when Bob will remove one zero, is when I put, or is when Alice puts the other zero in C. Does it make sense? Because till that point, I don't need to do it, right? So I know that zero is not necessary. So what will Alice do? Alice will take one, put it here, right? And remove it from the array. Now Bob. Bob knows this strategy that Alice has. So let's say, what will Bob do? If Bob removes this zero, he knows that Alice will also remove that zero. And zero will still be counted towards the max. So it doesn't make sense for Bob to right now pick up that zero. So what will Bob do? Bob will remove this two from the array because he can make sure that two will never come in that max. Does it make sense guys? Right. So Bob removed two. It is Alice's turn. So since these are the only elements left, Alice is going to put a zero and now Bob removes the zero. So the max of this element is two. So if you look at these two conditions, what do we notice? We notice that Bob can remove an element from C only if its frequency is 1. Otherwise, if its frequency is 2, let's say it is 0, 1, uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. Do you see that even if I take 2 first, Bob will take 0. Then Alice will take 0. Then let's say Bob takes 1. Then Alice will take this 1. And Bob has to take this 2. So no matter what I do, the max here is always going to be 3. I just take any number. Then... Whatever Bob takes, I will just take that number and my C will always be 0, 1, 2 and my max will be 3. So does this condition or this lemma make sense that Bob can remove an element from C or not allow an element to come to C only if its frequency is 1? Vineet says yes. What about others? Shriyan says yes. Okay. Raj says yes. So now getting back to these two examples, right? So our first example was 0, 1, 2, 3. And what was our second example? Our second example was 0, 0, 1, 2. If you notice here, the elements that come in that occur only once are 0, 1, 2, 3. Basically, all elements occur once. 
but here which are the elements that occur once one occurs once and two occurs once if we don't do anything okay if we don't do anything bob is going to take out these elements so what is alice going to do alice is going to take out these elements and put them in c in the first move after that bob knows that what are the smallest elements that occur exactly once bob will remove those elements and after that alice can put all other elements and then we can check for max does it make sense guys we came to know that alice bob can remove an element from c only if its frequency is 1 So I listed down all the elements whose frequency is one in sorted order. Now, since the game starts with Alice, Alice knows that if Alice didn't do anything, Bob will take out this zero. So Alice, in the first move, puts this zero in C, and similarly in this array, Alice puts this one in C. And after that, Bob is going to remove this two and one. So the maximum max here. can be 1 and the maximum max here can be 2 and as we notice max here is 2 and max here is 1 does it make sense guys so what is our solution our solution is just find elements with frequency 1 and from all those elements remove the second smallest does it make sense guys right shreyan says okay what about others we find all the elements with frequency 1 yes yes i am getting i am getting to that point that what if there is a frequency uh, what is what if there is an element with frequency 0 but for now we find all elements with frequency 1 we remove the second smallest element right and this is basically where we cap our max like our max max is going to be this apart from this all other elements are going to be there in the array so now we just find the max of the array max of the remaining array and this is going to be my answer for example in 0 0 1 2 the elements that occur once are 1 and 2 the second smallest is 2 so i just remove 2 now if i take the max of the array the max is 2 similarly if there is something like 0 1 2 3 okay in this case the second smallest element that occurs once is 1 so i remove 1 and the max of the remaining array is 1 but someone asks what if some element occurs zero times so if it is 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 all occur once the second smallest is 2 so i remove 2 so the max max that is possible is 2 but if we take the max of this array it turns out to be 0 so the answer for this test case will be 0 does this make sense guys raj says yes what about vineet what about shreyansh vineet says yes shreyansh says yes so the implementation is very simple just as i discussed i take in n i iterate from 1 to n i take in the i take in each element and i increment its frequency by 1 after that i store an array this array stores all the elements that occurs once so if i iterate through all the elements in my map if i dot second is 1 then i push back i dot first in my array basically if the frequency is 1 then i push back the element in my array i sort it right and if the size is greater than equal to 2 uh basically say stating that if the second smallest element is present then i remove it and how do i remove it i just make its frequency zero right 
how removing an element from the array is same as saying that is frequency is zero. So I sort all the elements that occur once, and if the second smallest element exists, then I just remove it from the array. After that, I just find the max of the array. How do I find the max of the array? My initial max is zero, and while the frequency of the current max is greater than zero, I just increment my max by one every time, and in the end. Whatever max I'm left with is my answer. Is this implementation clear, guys? Tell me. Is there any doubt in this implementation? Raj says your approaches to problems are quite good. Thank you. I I do try to solve them in quite a neat and clean way. So. Might be helpful. What about others? Did you guys understand this code? Vineet says yes. What about others? What about? And one more thing. Your okay. Thank you. Right. So. if problem c is clear let's move on to problem d right and problem d is actually not that hard it is a bunch of case work but it is not that hard it has some prerequisite okay but for now we are going to black box that prerequisite i am going to tell you what we are exactly going to do but let's understand a string t is said to be k good if there exists at least one substring of length k which is not a palindrome if f of t denotes the sum of all values of k such that the string is k good you are given a string s of length n you have to answer q a uh, q queries each answer has l and r you have to find the value s of l s of l plus 1 up to s of r right so this is the problem statement a very small problem statement but the solution is not that small so what are we going to do okay what does the problem say we are given a string s of length n then we are given q queries right in each query we are given two integers l and r what do we have to compute we have to compute f of l comma r what is this f of r is the number of k's right number of integers k such that there exists at least one okay ex at least one substring in this range in this particular range that is not a palindrome palindrome okay this is what we have to answer so tell me guys is this much clear yes basically from sl to sr we have to count the number of integers k such that there exists at least one substring of length k okay that is not a palindrome okay vinit says yes raj says yes now how do you go about thinking this problem because the brute force is very simple what is the brute force you are given l and r after that what do you do you iterate 
over the lengths 1 to k. Okay, whatever k can be the length of the substring. And after that, you iterate through all substrings of that particular length. Right. And you check if it is a palindrome or not. There can be n uh, substrings. Right. So this brute force is very slow and we find a count. Right. You can see that for one length only, for example, let's say the length was 1 to n. Okay. So in this particular case, we would have iterated k is equal to 1 to k is equal to n. And inside this, we would have iterated from i is equal to 1 to i is equal to n. And we would have checked if it is a palindrome or not. Checking if a palindrome, it's O of n. This is again O of n. And this is again O of n. So it would have been O of n cube if we tried to do it using brute force. Does it make sense, guys? What I'm trying to say is, if my string was A, B, B, A, and the query that I was given is 1, 4, then I would have checked for length 1. Right. None of it is a palindrome. So I add nothing to my answer. So it is currently zero. For length two, I check all the substrings. You can see that this is not a palindrome. So I add one to my answer because for length two, there is such a substring. Now for length three, okay, there does exist a substring that is not a palindrome. So I add one. And in the end, for length four, this is there is only one string. So I add nothing. So the answer for this is 1 plus 2. Sorry. I don't add 1. I add the length. Okay. For length 2, it is going to be 2. For length 1, it is going to be 1. So the answer here is 1 plus 2 because for length 2, it is possible. For length 1, it is possible. So the answer is 3. Is this much clear, guys? Sorry for that small mishap. But we are asked to find the sum of k's. Basically, for length 1, it is possible. For length 2, it is possible. So I have to print 1 plus 2, which is 3. Make sense? Put a yes in the chat if it does make sense. Vineet says yes. What about others? Right. So the thing... Isn't length 1 always a volume? Yes, it is a palindrome. I'm just explaining the question right now. I'm getting to the solution, right? So what are some observations that we can make? And let's solve this problem observation by observation. Okay. First of all, if nothing is a palindrome, okay, uh, before that, substring of length 1 is always a palindrome. What I'm trying to say is that if I have A, B, C, D, I never need to check for length 1 because it is always going to be a palindrome. Yes or no, guys? Tell me. Right? Now, what is now this is this observation is clear okay this is one observation substring of length one is always a palindrome second observation what will be my answer answer if no substring is a palindrome okay or basically if for each length There exists a non palindromic substring. Okay. For example, you can take the string ABCD. In this, length 4 is not a palindrome, length 3 is not a palindrome, length 2 is not a palindrome. So the answer is 4 plus 3 plus 2, and 1 won't be there because 1 can never be the answer. 
So what is the answer in this case? 4 plus 3 is 7 and 7 plus 2 is 9. Can we try to come up with a formula for this? Yes, it is basically 2 plus 3 plus 4 up to the length which is queried to us, right? So what is the answer? The answer is just n if n is the length that is queried n into n plus 1 by 2 minus 1. This is the sum of numbers from 1 to n and this is minus 1, right? So these are the two observations that we made. Okay. Apart from this, I want to teach y'all something today. Okay. Let me tell you what. Let's say the size of the substring is len. Okay. If len is a palindrome and the substring of size len minus 1 is also a palindrome, this means that all elements are equal. And let me show you how we can observe this. Or basically, all characters are equal. Let's let's take an example for odd case and let's take an example for even case. What I'm trying to say is that first, this is a palindrome. So this is equal to this and this is equal to this. Now, if size length minus one is also a palindrome, basically, this is equal to this is a palindrome and this is a palindrome. What can I say? This is equal to this and this is equal to this. Can you see that these two elements are equal, these two elements are equal and these two elements are also equal. Basically, all elements are same. Tell me guys. Does this make sense? Okay, now let's do the same for E1 case. In E1 case, these two have to be same and these two has to be same. Now, if I take length minus one, these two have to be same and these have to be same. So this is equal to this, right? And this is equal to this. If you see clearly, this these two are same, then these two are same. Let me use some other pen, okay? These two are same, then these two are same, these two are same, and then these two are same. Basically, if all strings of length n, basically this string is a palindrome, and the two strings of length minus 1 are a palindrome, then all elements are same. Does it make sense, guys? Tell me. Put a yes in the chat if it makes sense. Okay. So what is, so what did we discuss? We discussed that if no substring is a palindrome or basically if uh, one substring. Raj says, can you repeat once? I am slightly confused. Okay. Let me repeat that once, right? If you take an string of length n, okay? Let's say this is a palindrome, right? So what does it mean? It means that these two characters are same. These two characters are same. And this is equal to this. Does this make sense, Raj? Okay. Now, what will happen if the, the substrings of len minus 1 are also a palindrome? What I'm trying to say is what will happen if this is a palindrome and this is a palindrome. There occurs only two substrings of length minus 1. I hope that much is clear. Now, if this much is a palindrome, then these two characters are same and these two characters are same. 
similarly for this length these two characters are same okay and these two characters are same right does this much make sense so let's say i put an element a here. you can see that this element also has to be a this element also has to be a because uh, let me use some other color okay this has to be a this has to be a now since this has to be a this also has to be a and you can see that there is a way here also so this also has to be a basically all characters are same so what observations did we make we made that if at least one of each length exists then the answer is n into n plus 1 by 2 minus 1 apart from that if this length whatever length is given to us if that substring is a palindrome and both the substrings of length minus 1 is a palindrome then we can say that each element is same everything is same now tell me guys for this particular case is it hard to notice that the answer will be zero if all characters are same no matter what substring i take the answer is going to be zero right okay now that we have covered these two cases comes the next pair of most important cases right and i want to show you these two cases by taking examples the examples a b a b a right and the example a b a b what is the answer in this case if you notice length n is a palindrome so n won't be there we can find a size 4 so which is not a palindrome so i add 4 can i find size 3 no all size 3 are palindromic so i can't add 3 can i add 2 yes i can add 2 can i add 1 i cannot add 1 so answer here is 6 and for this can i add 4 yes i can add 4 can i add 3 no i can't add 3 can i add 2 i can add 2 in both these cases the answer is 6 what can we notice here tell me guys tell me anyone what is the pattern that we are noticing in these type of strings in this two types of repetitive pattern what i'm trying to say is if the string is of type x y x y x y so on and so forth then no odd length palindrome is possible right base why why is this not possible because for an odd length palindrome you have to fix a particular center let's say i fixed x y as a center you can see that to its right both elements are same to more right all elements are same and if i keep expanding the elements are same but for any even length palindrome i can just take xy as the center and this is no longer a palindrome so for this xy 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 pattern i can say that no odd length palindrome is possible uh sorry no odd length anti palindrome is possible basically each substring of odd length is a palindrome right each substring of odd length is a 
palindrome. This is what I want to say. Is this much clear, guys? Vinit says yes, Raj says yes. So, if my array is of type x, y, x, y, x, y, then my answer is just the, let's say it's length, right? It's just the sum of even numbers. 2 plus 4 plus 6. So on and so forth. Till I reach length. Less than n. Yes. Exactly. Is this observation clear? Okay. Now, what is the special property of these kinds of strings? Okay. Let's consider ABAB. Right? Is this a palindrome? Is length 6 a palindrome? Tell me. No. Are both strings of length 5 a palindrome? Yes, so for 5, both are palindrome. Is length 4 a palindrome? No. Okay. And similarly, will length 3 be a palindrome? Yes. Okay. So, the thing to notice is here, notice here is that if for a particular length x, if it is not a palindrome, then for x minus 2 also, it won't be a palindrome. Similarly, for length x, if it is a palindrome, then for length x minus 2, it will also be a palindrome. Is this much clear, guys? Tell me. Okay. Now, Apart from this particular case, okay, what were the cases that we discussed? We discussed that if none of them are same, none are same, answer is n into n plus 1 by 2, right? If all are same, then answer is 0. And how do we check this? We check this of palindrome length len and len minus 1. Apart from this, how do we, uh, the special case of strings a, b, a, b, a, b, so on and so forth, we check for length len, len minus 1, len minus 2, and len minus 3. If these two are same, basically if this is a palindrome, this is a palindrome, and if this is not a palindrome, this is not a palindrome. If this property satisfies, we can say that this is of type A, B, A, B. Does, does this make sense? We check. Is length len a palindrome? Is length len minus 1 a palindrome? Is length len minus 2 a palindrome? Is length len minus 3 a palindrome? If these two are same, basically if answer is yes for this and yes for this, no for this and no for this, if both of these are same and one of them has to be yes, then the answer is that the string is of type ABAB. Basically, same two characters repeated again and again. Does it make sense? Ayansh says yes. Would this works for all strings? Yes, this will work for all strings, right? What about others? Raj, does, is this clear? Basically, what I'm trying to say is, if I have the string AB, AB, and AB, if I take this length, it is not a palindrome. If I take this length, it is a palindrome. If I take this length, it is not a palindrome. And if I take length 3, it is a palindrome. So if this gets satisfied, this alternating pattern, then I can say that 
this is of type a b a b and in this case what is the answer the answer is just sum of even elements where till x where x is less than equal to len does this make sense okay now apart from these cases okay apart from these cases what is the case left case left is that len is a palindrome or len is not a palindrome len minus 1 let's say uh is also not a palindrome okay basically let's consider something like a b uh b c d or something like b this okay this is not a palindrome do you notice that since this is not a palindrome for any even length okay or let's say let's say some odd length i can always make a string that is not a palindrome of that particular length what is this length len is not a palindrome length len minus 1 is also not a palindrome okay this is not a palindrome these two are also not palindromes so we can see that length 6 is possible similarly can we make length 5 yes we can make length 5 okay now can we make length 4 we can just take a b b b b right we can make length 4 can we make length 3 you can see that okay this is a palindrome but we need only one string that is not a palindrome right so we take this string so length 3 is also possible is length 2 possible of course length 2 is possible so can you see like you can take more examples as well for example let's take a b b b c e, e, b and then c okay this is not a palindrome this is not a palindrome this is not a palindrome okay is length 6 possible yes it is possible is length 5 possible yes it is possible is length 4 possible yes uh, no this is more than 6 right this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8. is length 8 possible yes it is possible length 7 possible yes it is possible 6 possible yes 5 possible yes 4 possible 3 possible 2 possible so this is just 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 basically if we just check if length len is a palindrome and length len minus 1 is a palindrome if both are not palindromes the answer is just n into n plus 1 by 2 make sense does it make sense guys tell me can you prove it uh, yes it is possible to prove it why it works for all cases i can share you the proof in uh, let's say sometime i'll share you the mathematical proof but let's say you want a basic explanation on why this will work okay so how do you intuitively prove it let's see like how did it strike to you i just took some cases and then i like i was pretty sure that this is the case like you can prove it intuitively i didn't prove it mathematically but intuitively i just proved it that if len len is not a palindrome and len minus 1 is not a palindrome what does this mean it means that okay if this is not a palindrome it means that one of these is not equal and similarly if this is not a palindrome it means that one of these is not equal right one of these is not equal so you can just take that pair which is not equal as the center and you can expand upon it right 
basically let's say it is a b c and then it is a a a okay in this case for length 2 you can just take this for length 3 you can take this for length 4 you can take this length 5 you can take this and length 6 you can take this if you want something like a b a a a this is not a palindrome this is not a palindrome in this case for length 2 you can take this for length 3 you can take this for length 4 you can take this and for length 5 you can take this i just can get all lengths um no no this is not what it means because if you look at um uh, a b c no a b a b a then this is not a palindrome but this is a palindrome similarly this is a palindrome so you can't get length 3 here you can't get length you can get length 4 but you can't get length 5 so what you are saying that only length 2 we need to check is not true but this holds like if you check for length 1 and length length minus 1 you can be sure that all strings are palindrome basically anti palindrome you can have all of them except one does it make sense i'll have to check it's quite hard to prove it from small numbers but from large numbers it intuitively makes sense why it makes sense i'll just share it in the chat after this pcd is uploaded let's say in, right but for now does it intuitively make sense that for len and len minus 1 you can just form palindromes of each size right now apart from this what can be another case right another case something like could be and the last case this is the last possible case right let's say we have a b uh c b a right this is a string which is made of greater than equal to 3 characters right it is not of type a b a b a it is not of type where all characters are same it is not of type len is not a palindrome and len minus 1 is not a palindrome so what can we do here right similarly let's say we can take any palindrome right a b b c c b b a so this is a palindrome but this is not a palindrome okay in this particular case you can't have the length n right but can you have length 2 yes you can have length 2 a b is there b c is there c b is there and b a is there and why does this hold why can you have length n minus 1 because since if it was not possible to have length 2 okay what would this mean it means that all of the characters are equal and if all of them would have been equal length n and length n minus 1 would have been palindromes but length n is a palindrome and length n minus 1 is not okay does this make sense like length 2 is possible because length minus 1 is not a palindrome similarly if length minus 2 is not a palindrome i can just extend it and i can say that okay this two thing i can extend it further and the three one is not a palindrome i just need to check okay let me explain this once again the explanation is a bit shabby here 
So let's take the string of type, which is not of type ABAB, which is not of type AAAA, and it is also not of type, uh, let's say ABCD. Basically, nothing is a palindrome. In this case, only the string of length len is a palindrome. Okay. Nothing else is a palindrome. Length len is a palindrome. Len minus one is not a palindrome. Len minus two is not a palindrome. Len minus three is not a palindrome. When we wanted to check is length of len of length len not a palindrome for any substring. What did we check? We checked for len and len minus two. If I want to check if this length palindrome is of uh, is palindrome for length len and not palindrome for all the lengths below it, what do I need to check? Could someone let me know? Basically, for length len, it is a palindrome. I want to check for all lengths below it, it is not a palindrome. So which two numbers do I need to check for? Anyone? If I wanted to check for this len, I check for len and len minus one. So for len minus one, I will check for len minus one and len minus two. Isn't it? Len is a palindrome. I want to check are all the substrings below len minus one. Is there at least one substring that is not a palindrome? So I will just check for length len minus one and len minus two. What is Noob saying? Basically odd and even palindromes we are checking. Yes, we are checking for odd and even because if length is odd, then length minus one is even. And if length is even, length minus one is odd. Does this make sense, guys? Noob says yes. What about others? Raj says yes. Ayan says yes. So if you see, okay, I will check if length len is a palindrome, len minus one is a palindrome, len minus two is a palindrome, len minus three is a palindrome. Okay. What are what are the cases? All of them are no. Okay. This is yes and everything else is no then this is yes no yes no or this is uh no yes no yes okay or this is yes 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 okay anything else i don't think really matters okay uh, yeah so in this case it means that all strings are not a palindrome so answer is n into n plus 1 by 2. In this case, it means that all lengths from len minus 1, len minus 2, len minus 3, there exist substrings that are not a palindrome. Uh, so sorry, this is n into n plus 1 by 2 minus 1. This is nothing but n into n plus 1 by 2 minus 1 minus n. Because n, you cannot make up such a substring that is not a palindrome but everything else you can. Similarly, one, you cannot make a palindrome. Okay. Apart from this, if it is of type yes, no, yes, no, it is just sum of even numbers up to n. For this case also, it is the sum of even numbers up to n. And in this case, the answer is zero. Are all these five cases clear, guys? Put a yes in the chat if all these five cases are clear. This is of type A, B, C, D. This is of type, let's say, A, B, C, B, A. This is of type A, B, A, B. This is A, B, A, B. And this is A, 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 A. Right? So all that we need to do is check for length, len, len minus one. Len minus 2, len minus 3. It took me quite a while to solve this. I got 6 wrong answers. 
because I couldn't find all these cases. I basically found one test, one case in one submission. So how do we check this efficiently? I want to check if length len of that substring is a palindrome efficiently. Len minus one string is a palindrome efficiently. Len minus two and len minus three. So no, we cannot use sliding window here. We can use a very simple concept known as string hashing. Okay. Now what is string hashing? String hashing and that also rolling hash. Okay. This is kind of prerequisite for this problem. If you don't know this, go ahead and learn this today. It's a very neat technique. Basically, for every unique string, my string hash will give a value. Okay. Is it possible using Rabin carp? I am not quite sure. I will have to check. I will go back to you. Right. I don't know the idea on how to do with do it with Rabin card, but how you can do it using rolling hash or string hashing is very simple. Every string gives you an integer value x. Okay. Let's say a b c d uh, and c b a. Okay. This string will give you a unique value. This string will give you a unique value. This string will give you a unique value, so on and so forth, right? If I take the string A, B, C, D, C, B, A, and I take the string A, B, C, D, C, B, A, do you guys agree that the hash of both these elements, of both these strings will be the same? Same strings are going to have the same hash, right? Similarly, if I take something like A, B, A, C and A, B, A, B, these two strings are going to have a different hash, right? Their hash values are not going to be the same. Yes. So I just use a data structure, which is basically string hashing with rolling hash. It allows us to compute the hash of a particular substring really, really fast. Okay. You can black box it for this problem. Okay. If you want. And if you don't really know what this is, if you have no idea, go ahead and learn this topic today. It is a very neat topic. Now, all you have to do is check if is this length string equal to uh, like, for example, let me just show you if you want to check a, b, c, b, a. Okay. If this is a palindrome, what do you do? You reverse this. The reverse is a, b, c, b, a. Then you just check if these two are equal, right? So in string hashing, what do I do? I take an string S let's say it is a, b, b, a, c, d. Now I just reverse this. Right, so D, C, A, B, B, A. Now, if I want to check if this is a palindrome, I just find its uh, equivalent string. Basically, since this was the first four characters, this will be the last four characters. Now, I just check if this hash and this hash is the same. This is what idea we'll be using in string hashing. Is this much clear? Since we are going to reverse it anyways, I already create a reverse string of s and then I just find these two sub arrays and check if their hash is same or not. Is this much clear? Yes. So let me show you the implementation. The implementation is I have a, a hash bit. Okay. This is the data structure. Just ignore it for now. I am creating a left hash, which is basically on string S. Then I reverse my string S and then I create hash of right. Now, I am given L and R, right? I create OK vector, which is initially no, 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 no for len, len minus one, len minus two and len minus three. 
basically now i need to check for len len minus 1 len minus 2 and len minus 3 so i iterate four times now what will ok of zero store it will store if len len is a palindrome what will ok one store if length len minus 1 is a palindrome what will length ok two store if length minus 2 is a palindrome or not so how do you check if both are palindromes or not basically for length len a b c b a i need to check if this is a palindrome for len minus 1 i need to check if these two are palindromes for len minus 2 i need to check if these two are palindromes and for len minus 3 i need to check if these two are palindromes okay Checking this much is okay, but if you said that I want to check all strings of that length, that is also fine. You check this, then you check this, okay? Then you check these strings, and then you check these strings, okay? You can do this as well. It won't take much time. There is going to be one, two, three, four. Basically, there are going to be, how much is this? 10 strings that you will need to compare. So it won't be a lot. I just check the leftmost and the rightmost of that particular length because checking that much was feasible. So if the leftmost uh, string of that length is equal and rightmost string of that uh, length is equal, then okay, i is 1, otherwise it is 0. Initially, what is my answer? If everything is no, then my answer is just len into len plus 1 by 2 minus 1 because length 1 cannot be an answer. It's OK 0. If OK 0, what does this mean? Palindrome of size len, is uh, the string of size len is a palindrome. So what do I do here? I subtract R minus L plus 1, basically the length of the string from my answer. After that, I check is OK0 and OK1 a palindrome. And as we discussed, if len and len minus 1 are palindromes, it means that the entire string is of type AAAA. So answer is 0. Else if, if OK0 and OK2 are palindromes, then the answer is just sum of even numbers up to uh, up to length basically two four six up to length right similarly if ok1 is a palindrome and ok3 is a palindrome then i can say that answer is the sum of even numbers up to that particular length and in the end i just print out the length is this much clear guys is all the test cases clear it was quite a Uh, what do you say case by case case work kind of problem it was not that easy to understand that's why it had lots of uh, few solves right but these are the five cases if you can break down this problem into these five cases it just comes down to writing four if else statements right uh, Raj says can I summarize this sure Okay, so to summarize this, we are given a string S of length N and then we are given some queries. Queries are of type L to R. What do we have to print? We have to print if there exists for a particular K, if there exists at least one substring of size K, which is not a palindrome, I will add that to my answer. So basically, if it is 1 plus 2 plus whatever, it means that size 1 is not a palindrome, size 2 there exists a substring that is not a palindrome, okay? Now, there are five kinds of strings. One is of type AAAA, second is of type ABAB, third is of type ABABA, fourth is of type ABCD, basically nothing is a palindrome, and third is of type ABCDA, right? Here, the answer is going to be 0. 
here this answer is going to be sum of even numbers up to len here also it is going to be sum of even numbers up to len here it is going to be just len into len plus 1 by 2 and here it is going to be uh, sorry minus 1 as well because 1 is not a palindrome here it is going to be len into len plus 1 by 2 minus 1 and minus len because only this is not a palindrome. This is a palindrome. Everything apart from this, you can find a substring that is not a palindrome. So these are the five cases. How do you check this? You check this using string hashing. Okay. And that is all that you need to implement. You just check for all the four arrays len, len minus one, len minus two, len minus three. Then the initial answer is len into len plus 1 by 2. These are the other four kinds of strings. Right? And in the end, you just print answer. Does this make sense? Raj says yes. Noob says yes. Great. So that was more or less about this post context discussion. D was a bit of a problem on the hard side today. Even C was kind of hard, not really, but it was hard. But that is more or less it, right? If you are able to come up with this casework, you can just solve this problem. I myself had a lot of wrong submissions today, but it is all about it. Raj says, can I unmute? Yeah, let me just uh, stop recording and then you can ask me doubts often, right? So that is more or less it about the post-content discussion. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.